सबको नमस्कार ये प्रोग्राम ये जो आज का कार्यक्रम है वो गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन पॉवर्टी एलिगेशन आपके जो अनुभव है उसके बारे में उसको उसके उसको सुनना चाहते हैं आई थिंक एवरीबडी हियर नोज हाउ इम्पोर्टेंट दिस इश्यू इज द आइडिया ऑफ इम्प्रूविंग क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ इन स्लम्स बट डूइंग दैट इन अ वे दैट टेक्स द व्यूज ऑफ द कम्युनिटी इन टू अकाउंट एट द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया लेवल दे आर ऑलवेज लुकिंग एट द होल प्रॉब्लम एंड द होल प्रॉब्लम लुक वेरी लार्ज It's always big numbers, 26 million units, uh, millions of households in slums. So, how do you solve that problem? The broad presentation is put into three buckets: community-based initiatives, NGO, civil society-based uh, facilitated initiatives, and uh, state-led initiatives. How do we get communities to participate in the outcomes that happen in their area? Today's workshop is different. All stakeholders are different. Two people are representing. कम्युनिटीज के रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हैं एनजीओ जो कम्युनिटीज के साथ काम करते हैं वो है एकेडमिक्स के लोग हैं सरकार में जो काम करते हैं हमारे तरफ वो लोग हैं आज हम रे में चाह रहे हैं कि सिटी वाइड अप्रोच हो पूरे शहर को हम स्लम मुक्त करने करने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं तो जब हम पूरे शहर की बात करेंगे तो शुरुआत कहाँ से करेंगे मैपिंग करेंगे सर्वे करेंगे डॉक्यूमेंटेशन करेंगे फिर उसके बाद जो इन्फॉर्मेशन हमारे पास आएगा उसके अनुसार हम प्लानिंग करेंगे और फिर हम इम्प्लीमेंटेशन में जाएंगे तो जब हम कम्युनिटी को पार्टनर समझेंगे तब उनका डोमेन नॉलेज हम ले पाएंगे और तभी हमारी मैपिंग सही होगी और इसीलिए आज और कल हम चाहेंगे कि कम्युनिटीज के जितने रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हैं आए कम्युनिटीज के साथ काम करने वाले जितने एनजीओ हैं एकेडमिक फील्ड के जितने लोग हैं ये हमें सभी को सिखाए ये मैपिंग एक्सरसाइज हम करते वक्त किस तरह से हम पार्टनरशिप में काम कर सकते हैं things that uh, emerged out of uh, their presentation uh, from the pune experience it was one slum settlement eroda where uh, the community was engaged right from the uh, mapping documentation and even in the implementation the second case where we found in sarojamma's case that uh, we had this empowered women's community Which the city of a local body did not utilize while uh, implementing the housing program, where this community, which had mustered their savings and on their own strength, took up. Though it was in the 90s, but when the ASUP IGSTB program came in, the of a local body would have utilized this body that was there, the, the CBO, the women's group, to take forward the uh, housing program. In the third case, we found uh, they started off with one settlement, but then extended it to 13, and we had the uh, city representatives saying that why did you not go up to only 99? So it was uh, a good experience, and uh, I think uh, certainly it was a case where we found that the uh, the city representatives, the urban local body representatives, and the community NGOs are. working together and they are looking forward to seeing how we can extend it and that is where in fact we have to take this process because when we are talking about rajiv awas yojana which uh, uh, has this ambitious plan of uh, approaching the 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 problem on the city wide approach uh, we will have to see how we scale this up all of them have faced problems but then the issue that came out was that uh, when the communities and mainly the women's community was organized uh, they could uh, approach the problem in their manner and help the uh, other stakeholders try to solve the problem so it was not all is well all is well but it was uh, that there are problems and if we are also in queue we will be able to solve i think that is what sharad was also mentioning he did not uh, for a moment say Urmila, that um, the, the 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 technocrats and the other experts can do this nothing well. What he was suggesting is that let us do it together, and that is what is the objective of this workshop of partnership. And we have seen in all the three case studies that uh, there is this uh, empowered community, especially the women's group, who can be actually taken in. And uh, we, as uh, government representatives, have to see how we can scale it up to achieve that. Uh, city wide uh, approach that we are approaching in 
Yeah, if you look at the morning session, both the community-based projects as well as the second session, which is uh, the state projects, everything is about details. And it's all little details, whether it's about that particular project, or it's about the details of policy, or it's about the details of community involvement. It's all about details. And if we are not dealing, whether at the community level or at NGO level, we must sensitize the people we deal with that this is about details, number one. Number two, there is a tension which I hope we can talk uh, and get the views of Mr. Gautam and uh, Samir and the Pune representative. Last three years, this has been going on, 3,000 units, and it's a success. It's a fantastic success. Lots of things to learn. We are going to go this evening and see it. Small operational irritations are there, like payments not coming, all that. But at a larger level, this is a success. <coughs> but it's taken three years of outstanding institutions, of a lot of reputational investment like Spark and Mahila Milan and so on to do. Similarly, we heard from Tirupati, Dan Foundation brought, 1993 it started, right? Almost 20 years. How many dwellings have been built? 2,000? 3,000? Again, phenomenal success. But look at the scale of this. And contrast this with the presentation from Pune, from Hyderabad, and what the state government said. I think we, as people who want to promote participation, need to be sensitive to this. To say, in Pune, he said in the next three years, Mr. Kolte said, 250, 200,000 units. In Hyderabad, 150,000, 200,000 units. And if you don't build it in three years, the problem is going to grow again. So, how do we reconcile the small patience of community-based initiatives that will generate very good success, but hundreds, versus the need of a government at a state or a city level to generate solutions in the tens, if not hundreds of thousands? Where is the capacity to marry these two? And therefore, do we compromise? Do we say this kind of approach is only going to solve 5% of the problem? Or how do we scale it up? So this is an important point. So there are about three distinctive groups. Now the four one <coughs> is a technological group. Four groups are presented. Uh, each one has come out with a very distinctive way of how to take it forward. They raise an opportunity to go for a systematically put the process in place. So can you say the ray would be given an opportunity to put things in a systematic manner to work on these three or four stakeholders? That's very, very important thing. So we need to put some common sense uh, steps forward, nothing technical and other things. The second thing is, when we talk about all these things, who are really the stakeholders uh, in operation? I think uh, municipality has a kind of uh, figure and the ownership. If they have the attitude like yesterday, the Hyderabad Municipal Commissioner, he took a kind of a very proactive stand, and also he has a requisite attitude as well as the skill also. It's a really fortunate, but we don't have that in every way. I think that also we need to really keep it in mind. So we have an, a look for an ideal situation. At the same time, there is a practicality there, but we need to move forward. I think when you look at the municipality, ideally they should really want this with the internal capacity to move forward. I think that's what I did. But in our cities, there are different people with a different distinctive capacity. How do we legitimize, how do we legitimize shared responsibility at a city level and with a um, institutionalized way? I think this is a very, very important thing. Otherwise, somebody institutes something and after that, the continuity is not provided by municipality at the leadership level, because leadership keeps changing. How do we create a legitimate shared responsibility at each city with an institutionalized way to move it forward? Then only I call it as a systematic. The third one is, we are talking about scaling up. I think that came out very, very clearly. There are pilots which are going up in many places. So how do you scale up? Those who are really doing the pilots, they should be allowed to scale up. I think many times in a government system, uh, everything is looked at as suspect. Okay, why should we really favor this group to really scale it up? I think uh, so many issues are like the, how do we interact with the technology people with the community? The community is really interested. Community is always open. 
So how do you inclusive of the community is that really crux of the issue. I think the local language is highly emphasized by Shah. It's very, very important. And this next session, how do we divide our set to a different? Our uh, theme is like, uh, how do we advance this participatory slam mapping? But that's one of the process. Here, very important thing is, what for? The outcome-based participatory mapping is very, very important. What is this outcome has to be really emphasized more. Otherwise, this, this will be only process-driven not resulting in what is the kind of outcome it should really result into. It. How do we take it forward as a policy recommendation to the ministry? Probably five or six or seven points. And the second part is how we are really going to advance in this group. Like what uh, Shila was suggesting, uh, the kind of uh, visit, training, documentation, that's the second part of the uh, kind of a recommendation uh, for us. So what is coming out of this is recommendations which fall in two buckets. One is recommendations we want to make to the ministry to review, or A. And the second is that as people who are deeply committed to addressing this issue of participation, of community and city involvement in this process, what are the things we want to recommend that we all do together in the foreseeable or the near future, to build skills, to build capacity for us. The suggestions are really coming. In fact, when we had a PAC meeting with Aruna Sundararaj and the Secretary, she was saying that we have rolled out the GAS mapping and everything is done there. So it's going on in all the cities. Now the situation is, how do we interface that? Because already rolled out, and we are really saying that this should have been really done in a very little uh, differently then, but now things have really happened. So probably this group also should discuss. If they really come out with that, again, we should really bring the process with the community. I mean, the group should really think about how do we, this process going to interface with a participatory slum mapping. This could have discussed, because I thought if, uh, suppose I bring up this whole issue into yeah. three parts. One is the technology part, its comprehension, understanding of that across the board in an uniform manner. Second is the whole issue of how communities participate, how we can build capacity, how NGOs, the environment of NGOs at various levels. A third is issue of various types of funding, finances and other things that are required. One could be three groups discuss individually at each of these, or on these three topics all the three groups give their solution. That's the point I was trying to make. I think this workshop uh, stand uh, different by the deliberate process of bringing community. I think the process of deliberately bringing the community, though they are little, not they are really so comfortable like us speaking in English, English but they brought the process in and the kind of uh, emotion, the kind of uh, uh, thing, they made a mark. I mean, we need to really first uh, thank all of them. Take a big trouble as they came out. The second one is the kind of presence for the uh, two days so intense and people are really fully involved. I think that's great. I think our role as a technical advisory group members, so we will also really try to push that in a, in a stronger perspective. I think when we talk about uh, community participation, I think uh, we had this for many decades. And um, I think there is a, a new thoughts, we are really pushing it, that they should be partners. I think they should really move into ownership. I think the ownership is really the right term. And who participate what? I think it's a community project, others are participating. I think this uh, the paradigm shift is still it's really going around. I think this the word participation itself is an untouchable word like uh, cooperatives. I think we have to really change the terminology. I put a very strongly saying that it's a community project, others are really participating in it. I think that needs a rigorous thing. And um, the other point come, came here is like the microfinance or a savings like groups are really needed as a building block for any of the programs in the slums. I think that's coming up I think prerequisite. All are talking about grant based makes the things little tougher. Uh, our experience and elsewhere, how do you make this as a 
lending loan base, which brings the owners right into the members. Because if I'm taking a loan, then I'll ask a question, where I need this or where I need that. So the whole funding pattern needs to be really realigned. Probably what they need is the interest subsidy, not the grant subsidy. I think we need to really, then you bring other actors little at a distance. I think there is need to really look at this grant funding as a community grant, but the community grant can really go as a revolving fund. I think we need to look at this financing little bit, little bit radically different. Uh, fine, and there are a lot of experiences all around. Um, uh, we also talked about scaling up and pilots, scaling up the pilots and also some more pilots. I think this needs a, a careful um, <coughs> design and it should be really part of a, a guidelines kind of a thing. And uh, there are many typologies are coming in, like some of the cities have a land, some cities does not have a land. So we need to really put a guidelines in a different typology, even within the city itself. City itself, some slums are different, some slums are different. So there is need to have four or five different kind of typology within the guidelines. I think which is also to be really looked at it. So as a technical advisory group, we'll take it forward in two ways. One is to really look at these inputs to for revise the guidelines. And last of all, I want to tell all of you that there are we are a very small group of people who passionately care about taking these processes forward. So stay angry and irritated if things don't happen. This is the only way we can collectively make this process move forward. Doesn't matter if you're part of government or NGOs or communities or professionals. Let's all work together to make this happen. So thank you very much.